Hello, Bethlehem Baptist Church. This is Pastor Dean, and happy Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, December the 3rd, the 11th day of Advent, as are we, we're going through our journey through the scriptures and the Christmas story through the days of Advent. So this is our 11th Advent devotion, and today we continue the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Let's read this together. So in way of context, the, the angels have appeared to the shepherds. They have announced the birth of Christ. They announced the sign. But notice verses 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let's think about this verse for a second. Notice, first of all, surprise follows upon surprise. An angel surprised the, the shepherds, and then a host of angels surprised them again. One angel had descended and taken his position in the vicinity of the shepherds. And once he had made his announcement, all of a sudden an entire army of angels descend. These angels are now standing with the first angel and near the shepherds praising God and giving him glory. It must have been quite a sight that night on the hills outside of Bethlehem. Notice how God arranged matters in such a way that the order was not reversed. First the one angel, then the army, not the other way around. Not until shepherds had become somewhat used to the celestial brilliance that blazed around them and have received one angel a message of cheer did all the other host of angels descend. But I want to submit to you this morning that term, host. That's a military term. And with this term in mind, they were not only messengers of God, but they were fierce warriors for God. The term host is the Greek word stratius, an encamped army. As classical Greek, this is referred to as an army, and this term only appears twice in the whole New Testament. But there were an army of angels there that night in Bethlehem. And I look here and I ask myself, why would there have been an army of angels that night in Bethlehem? And this is a shot in the dark, but I believe Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5, gives us the answer. And in that passage of scripture, we find that great prophecy of the great red dragon. A wonder appears in heaven, a sign, a mark, a symbol that carries a special meaning or points to us something beyond it. And the vision begins with a rapid review there of the first coming of Jesus Christ in his first five verses of Revelation 12. A righteous remnant in Israel in the first century eagerly anticipated the coming of Messiah. Mary, Joseph, Simeon, Anna, all had awaited the coming of Christ and rejoiced at his arrival. But we notice in Revelation 12 verse 4, the great red dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour the child as soon as it was born. Now, many of scholars have interpreted this to mean Herod the Great, which had tried to destroy Jesus in Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 18, and they had to flee to Egypt. And that's a great interpretation. But by that time, he was a young child after the wise men left. The word says here that he was ready to devour the child as soon as it was born, was standing before the woman who was in travail and in pain and in labor. But with that passage in mind, in my heart and my soul, I truly believe something happened that night. There was a host of angels standing at attention, ready to fight. There was a great red dragon, Satan, ready to devour the Christ child. But I submit to you today that these angels on this very night were standing, waiting for any trouble. And because if there was any trouble by Satan and his angels concerning the birth of Christ, it was going to be war. Could you imagine what was going on inside Mary's head? the intense spiritual warfare as Mary's giving birth to Christ. Now this is food for thought today, but I truly believe there was a host of angels ready to fight off the attacks of Satan that night so Jesus could be born and that God's plan of redemption could happen in this world. I say this because throughout the Old Testament you see tr Satan trying to wipe out the seed, the line for which Jesus would be born. In Genesis 3.15, God prophesies at the end of Satan, it shall bruise thy head and you shall bruise his heel. War is declared with Satan. He would ultimately be defeated by the power and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan's only hope for victory lay in the prevention of the seed of this woman from being born and to destroy it after it did come. So if Satan could only interrupt the line of this coming promised seed who was Christ and prevent his coming, he would gain the victory even without a battle. He tried by having the Hebrew babies killed by Pharaoh in Exodus 1. 
At one point in Israel's history, Satan was successful in killing all the royal seed of the house of Judah, but one boy was hidden in the temple for six years during that awful threat that Joash was spared. He was the only person on earth through whom the Messiah could come. Later in history, during the time of Esther, Satan uses a man named Haman to make a decree to kill all the Jews, young and old, including women and children, in one day. God used Esther and Mordecai to spare a nation. One of the most ruthless attempts of Satan was the edict of Herod to kill all the babies two years old and younger in Bethlehem. So Revelation 12:4 tells us the dragon, Satan, stood before the woman, Israel, which was ready to be delivered for the delay of her child, Jesus Christ, as soon as it was born. So was there trouble that night? All we know that angels were guarded. They were charged to guard the birth of Christ from the attacks of Satan. But notice their praise. Glory to God in the highest. It was suddenly, it was unexpectedly, an unknown number of angels joined the first. We don't know how many, but it says a multitude. Plethos. That gets our word plethora, meaning there was a whole lot of angels. A heavenly host, stradia, an encamped army of angels. This pictures the angelic power of heaven as God's army. Luke likens the angels to an army passing in review, representing the awesome power of heaven gathered, and on this particular occasion for peaceful purposes, and by leading the celebration of Christ's birth, they showed submission to the infant king of the world. Could you imagine all the angels that were giving praise to Christ, the excitement over the birth of the king, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The praise of heaven for the work of the Savior broke forth in the words of the heavenly host with the angels saying these words, Glory to God in the highest. They desired all creation, all creation. Praise God. Think of the relief that would have come over the angels of the fact that it was no trouble to bring Christ into this world and now he could begin his mission. The angels bring glory to God and to do his will and the fact that God desires all to be saved and did all the necessary measures to do so. Let God have the honor of his work. God's wisdom, God's kindness, God's love design his favor. Other works of God are for his glory, but the redemption of the world for glory and the highest. But he says on earth, goodwill toward men. The vertical praise to God and the affirmation, the horizontal effect of his grace when the Lord's redemptive plan is complete. The birth of Christ was designed primarily to glorify God. And as a result of his coming, one day we will find peace in this world. But peace on earth, repeated so often at Christmas time, it's not about quiet tranquility or merely the absence of animosity between people. It's a declaration of the coming in of hostilities between a holy God and sinful humanity through the atoning work of Messiah. Peace with God. When God's redemptive plan was complete, he would have restored peace between God and humanity, Romans 5, 1, as well as peace between all individuals. And he will bring order from the chaos of sin someday when true peace, true shalom will happen. But understand, if you don't have the Lord in your life, in your heart, in your life, if you've never accepted him, you've never been born again, and if you don't have him, you don't have peace in your heart, and you'll have love for others, Men and women need Jesus Christ and the peace that comes from knowing him. Jesus came to pay the penalty for our sin and impute to us his righteousness. Only when we've been declared righteous by faith can we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace among people is the only possible when humanity is living at peace with God and submitting to his kingdom rule. And that goes for communities and churches and families. So today... Here's the application on this 11th day of Advent. Ask yourself, what am I doing with the Christmas story? Using the example of the angels, the angels announce the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas, it isn't about presents and giving and lights and atmosphere. It's about a baby born to Mary and Joseph 2,000 years ago. A baby that came into the world with the sole purpose of redeeming mankind. All those who accept him as Lord. How about you? Are you ashamed of the gospel? Do you love him? Are you happy he's taken over a wicked sinner and saved you that you just want to tell others the Lord's done for you? Are you announcing the true meaning of Christmas? Secondly, are you guarding the true meaning of Christmas? If you don't notice or not, it seems that every passing Christmas, more and more, uh, the emphasis is not on the true meaning of Christmas. And I thought about this. 
there's a mandate here that we guard, protect the birth of Christ, the message of Christmas. Tell our kids, teach our teach another generation that. And thirdly, does your life bring praise, honor, glory to God? What a gift that God gave us when he gave us his son. And what a gift God gives us this Christmas by giving him our lives, surrendering all to him. The idea is this, because I love him with all my being, I shall surrender the controls to him. The wise men did, the shepherds did, Mary and Joseph did, and God bless them. When you surrender, when you surrender, you're on the right track for what God intended you to be because your life, whatever job, career you do, will be glorifying Him. Are you doing what you're supposed to do with the Christmas story? Are you announcing it? Are you guarding it? Or are, you know, are, does your life bring praise, honor, and glory to God? What a thought today as we consider the angels. And uh, I hope and trust you have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you.